I still get a lot out of listening to the music of my youth. I think most people do. In fact, it's commonly passed around that most people don't even listen to new music at all after they're in their 20s or so. Don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm only citing it so I can refute it. I am still constantly on the prowl for new musical experiences, both as a listener and as a musician. And I think that's true for a lot of musicians. But I still really enjoy going back and listening to things I enjoyed when I was younger and realizing the many ways they have influenced me over the years. A big one for me is the early years of the era of so-called IDM. What does that stand for anyway? Iterative disbursement methods? Inordinately drawl machinations? Surely not something even more pretentious and ridiculous than those. Well, one way or another, as with so many genres, it's likely that the artist had this name applied to their music and didn't feel very comfortable with it, so I'll avoid saying the name of the genre from here on out. Anyway, one thing that I really liked is what some of these artists did with drum sounds. There were, of course, a lot of looped and chopped breakbeats to be heard at this time, but I'm thinking particularly of something different, some sounds that I heard on a couple albums in particular. Aphex Twins' I Care Because You Do and Autechre's Try Repite, uh, both of which were released in 1995. Many of the percussive sounds on these records were clearly synthesized and did not sound like they were following the rock drum set paradigm of kick, snare, hi-hat, etc. As you may know, most dedicated drum synthesizers do follow this paradigm, and so does a lot of beat-driven electronic music. And obviously a lot of that music is fantastic and classic, but I'm also interested in what makes drum sounds tick, so to speak. Just as I'm interested in peeling apart the layers of shape and gesture contained within any sound. So I'm not going to attempt to recreate the sounds I heard on those classic records. I'm more interested in reaching back into my memory and using what was striking to me about them back then as a starting point. A lot of it was that there was a sort of detailed crunchiness and bumpiness and moving pitch even to sounds that occupied the rhythmic place that a kick drum typically would. In the tape and microsound music machine, we do not have a dedicated oscillator module. I think this is great because there's a lot of paths we've already drawn with basic synthesizer layouts and how to create various types of sounds. There's no low pass gate or dedicated VCO module here either, so we're gonna have to think outside these paradigms a little. So again, I'm looking for a sort of crunchiness to the sound on lower frequencies. I'm going to cycle this math channel here and instead of gating it with a VCA, I'm just gonna keep it running sub audio frequency and then use the other channel to sort of smack it up into the audio range to create the transient. And we'll patch the dynamic gate from zero control to trigger that channel to create that transient. This means that instead of actually changing amplitude, it's only going to change frequency. And the bottom frequencies are going to be so low that we might hear the individual oscillations during the decay phase. The main thing I want to do here is find ways to emphasize these slower oscillations to make them crunch. So we'll patch this function here, which we'll call an oscillator, to the QPOS running both outputs of QPOS into the mimeophone here. function controls
and the frequency and Q controls of the Q pass to shape this bit. Let's try to add some emphasis here by controlling this oscillation frequency not only with the other math channel, but with the sum, which lets me mix in the channel we're listening to and have it FM itself. Just make it a little spikier, so to speak. could patch a channel output from the zero control to sequence its pitch as well while still hitting it with these functions. Since we're talking about feedback, let's also feedback the QPOS. I'm going to take the bandpass output and patch it to the FM input. dialing in for the amount of extra crunch I want. And let's sequence the Q input too. Let's also take the unattenuated function that we're using to shape the kick and send it to the unattenuated frequency input of QBOS. This only really works because of the exponential fall and relatively short decay. Otherwise, we'd get into laser beam territory pretty quickly. There are variations to be had here. We could switch to the end of cycle output for a square wave bass sound. Switch to the high pass filter outputs. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
easy to take this away from being percussion sounds still and get into kind of a hybrid sound somewhere between percussion and a bass line. Mass and QPOS are not a very traditional oscillator and filter pair, but I do think they offer a lot of possibilities for expressive patching when we get creative. And of course, nothing would stop you from recording whatever sounds you like into the morphogene and building out from there. It's a common cliche to say that something new sounds like the future. We'll never actually know what the future sounds like, but we do know that it's informed by the present just as the present is always informed by the past. 